What have the solar winds deposited on my doorstep now? Just more dirt and debris? Or do you actually believe you are here seeking the truth? I must admit, I tire of the truth seekers. Mayhaps you're here to rob me? That would be so much more exciting. the audacity. Strangers enter my home and demand to know who I am? What fun! Is this a multiple choice question? Because I'm not sure I remember anymore. No, she's not. She's a lady of transcendent wisdom. Can you not see that? Very astute. And I'm out here to meditate and contemplate the unendurable mystery without being bothered. So why are you bothering me? We've been told this was once yours. I believe the knowledge within here contains the answers I seek. Answers that will free men's minds from toil. I can translate it, but it won't do you any good. I can see you are a man in a hurry. And the insights in that book would take you years of study to fully comprehend. I have spent my life in contemplation. I believe my mind is prepared to receive the truth. There is one way that can speed up the process. It involves a combination of several ingredients, some of which can be fatal. It is not for the faint of heart or the unprepared. A crass way to put it, but yes, chemicals that can expand or destroy the participant's consciousness. Either hallucinations followed by unconsciousness and a headache, or raving insanity, which can be fun in its own way. And I believe he may be right. There is both violence and peace warring inside you, Max. This process would be extremely tenuous for one such as yourself. I'm committed, no matter the cost. Uh, I don't know, Captain. Is this safe? I don't think this is safe. Well, I don't want to leave you all on your lonesome. I I'll just... Oh, fine, I'll do it. All right. Head on into the meditation room and partake of the sacramental incense. It's waiting on the table when you're ready to begin. Still meandering about? Last minute questions, perhaps? There's not much to tell. The process forces us to face our fears, those things which keep us from the truth, but only if we're prepared to see them. You came to me. I did not seek you out. Besides, cleaning up bodies is so time consuming, and there's my bad back to consider. that have... Uh, 
What's happening to my voice? Does my voice sound weird to you? And what's wrong with your face? Y'all see these stars I'm seeing? Gosh, they're pretty. Like shimmers in the sea. Don't tell me these drugs have warped your sense of truth, along with your face. Is it just me, or is everything a little wavy in here? Never mind. This is all lies, I'm sure of it. We are obviously the victims of a tasteless joke being perpetuated... Uh, perpetrated? I mean, we're being made fools of, aren't we? When I get out of here, I'm going to show that hermit what you get for messing with me. Maximilian, always ready to give up, to lash out. Always searching for answers, but always in the wrong place. Never looking inside himself. I hope you'll pardon my interruption, but I think it's because he's unhappy with himself. Thank you. It relieves me to see there's at least one positive influence in my son's life after all these years. Has he told you how he thoughtlessly abandoned us? Thoughtlessly? How could you say that? I only wanted you and father to be proud of me. I was going to be the perfect vessel. I was going to be a better... more full of the plan. This here, it's all coming out wrong the plan. It filled you with a joy I could never feel. I wanted it. And being a laborer made me miserable. I was better than that. You certainly convinced yourself you were. But don't feel bad. We continually lie to ourselves, weaving stories in a vain attempt to convince us that we are in control of anything. These stories are how we try to make sense of our lives, but they are not real, are they? They're just stories. You need to drop your story and see the truth. Stories are real. If they mean something, if they inspire you to kindness or, or action, but maybe Max's story about himself is all wrong, and that's why he's so unhappy. What the... Fuck, are you talking about? No, I just wanted to prove to my parents that I... That... Uh, damn it. You're right. Max, you need to lay the past to rest. What happened with your father and I, it's long dead. To obtain your goals, you must live in the chaos. Be fine with the chaos. Whether you resist or not, it will take you wherever it wants. More assuredly than even the fictional architect's plan you sleep away to prove. No, that's not true. The basis of everything is order, not chaos. It's true, I know it is. So did you. Why are you denying it? Before you died, the plan made you happy. No, it didn't. I made myself happy. There's nothing holding you back but you. If you can't understand that, you will never understand anything. Goodbye, Maximilian. This whole thing, it's... It's... It's just a farce, right? Just... Just my own brain working against me? You couldn't be more right. Hello, Max. What? Who? Why do you look like me? Are you me? Not really. I'm who you think you are. I am disciplined. Controlled. I have no doubts. And I don't exist. Yet you have judged yourself against me your whole life. Why? Why do you berate yourself for not being me? I... Uh, don't know what to say. Thank you, Captain, but... I just... 
I, I don't know. Is it wrong to try to be a gooder, better person than I am? But that's not what you're doing, is it? You're desperately trying to find a story to organize reality in your head. A story to control everything. A new story of the happy you. The contented you. Me. That's not... Uh, it can't be right. I, I've only been searching for the answer to the equation. Because it will set us free. Won't it? How? By removing the need to make any decision. To have your life completely controlled. The illusion of certainty? Your obsession allowed you to avoid the real question. Who are you? I'm Max. Me! I'm real! You can't convince me otherwise! Please don't convince me I'm not. It's okay, Mr. Vicker. We're here, watching over you. You just ride this out, right? Your individual self is what's not real. It is simply a concept. By the architect. Architect? How could I have believed in an architect? That's ridiculous. I must be losing my mind completely. What you're saying almost makes sense. We exist inside our thoughts, thinking we're in control. That's it, isn't it? We have no control over anything. It's all lies. How could I not have seen this? But how do we escape our... ourselves? I see you're back with us. Feared we lost you there. Never seen anyone pass out yet stay upright before. Ruined? You seem to be having quite the time. Though I must admit I was a bit concerned when you stripped naked and tried to eat your clothes. I was joking. You passed out fairly early in the process. Well before I realized what an ignorant fool I've been. Everything is perfect. In a way. Perhaps it's more accurate to say I was asking the wrong questions. I understand so much more now. I see it all. All there is to be experienced, to be lived. Of course there is pain and loss, but the suffering is caused by trying to control reality, clinging to the way you want things to be, not enjoying the way they are. I am content. I finally found what I was looking for, even though I was looking for the wrong thing. Have you found your answers? Not so much found as finally listened. Yes, it is quite the convoluted maze we build for ourselves. It looks like you learned something in there as well. Hearing that brings me great joy, my friend. If I still believed in the Grand Plan, a revelation like this would have seriously shaken my faith. Knowing you, I can only assume you have already begun formulating a plan to deal with this. So tell me, what are we going to do? Yes, of course. And when you do, you can count on me to back your play. Your instincts haven't failed us so far. Anything you'd like to discuss? 
I used to believe their religion to be false, in contradiction to what I knew to be true. How pompous and sure of myself I was. Their basic tenets were closer to the truth than my own cherished beliefs. I wouldn't say my parents disowned me, strictly speaking. But before they died, they accused me of thoughtlessly abandoning them. I couldn't understand it. I was only trying to make them proud by becoming a better vessel for the plan, to feel the joy they felt. I was so certain my potential was wasted as a laborer, and was willing to risk everything just to prove to them that they were wrong. I was lost, misguided. was merely an illusion anyway.
May you find peace in Jack. Enough of you! Processing to beginning.
Hey, you. Looking for something? Where do you think you're going? Yeah. The captain said we might be getting a new recruit. That you, then? Sounds like Clyde's jumping to conclusions, but yeah. I'm Felix. You're on a first-name basis with Captain Harlow, huh? All right, go on through. Got my sights on you. Well, hey there, Hullhead. Clawed your way out of the Groundbreaker at long last? Uh-huh. Oh, sorry, were you expecting me to say something? Maybe a long time no see, or a you've aged, old man. Your captain has a sense of humor, Felix. Good. There's a time and place for humor. So, you took Felix under your wing. Kept him busy. Good. Kid always needed a place to belong. Felix will always have a place in this crew. He's family to us now. Hear that, Clyde? I've been making something out of myself. So long as you haven't been making a fool of yourself. I'm sure Felix has no end of stories to tell of your exploits together. I look forward to catching up with the boy. I imagine he has. I was a mentor to the boy during his formative years. You might say I have an elder brotherly interest in his development. Oh, it would have been nice to know that sometime in the last, uh, hang on, doing some math? Half a decade? I'm working on something. Something big. Something the likes of which Halcyon has never seen. And I want Felix to be a part of my initiative. I'm fulfilling a promise I made to the boy. That one day, he and I would change the colony together. That day has finally arrived. Easy there, Clyde. No one said nothing about throwing in with you. In case you didn't notice, I'm pretty happy where I am. I'm not asking you to walk away from your captain, Felix. But neither should you allow yourself to be controlled by fear. Change is not to be feared. I brought you here because I want to know where Felix's loyalties lie. When the day of our revolution comes, I want to know that I can rely on him. That you feel insulted is a testament to your affection for the boy. I'm not asking you to let him go. Not until he's ready. I understand that Felix is part of your crew, at least for now. If the thought of losing him troubles you, then understand that you're helping him solve a problem for an old friend. I want you to deal with a traitor for me. Name's Trask. Kill him, and bring me proof of his death. His ring should do nicely. We're not a band of common pirates, Captain. We are revolutionaries. I expect a certain degree of intestinal fortitude from my soldiers. Trask was a coward. Then Felix will have done me a favor, and I will be grateful. I imagine we'll catch up on lost time, have a long talk about his future. I don't contest your claim to Felix's services, but he is his own man. And we are all of us responsible for our own destinies. Hey, boss is a point. You're talking about me like I'm not even here. I'm negotiating with your captain. You are her subordinate, at least for now. Ratted us out to the board. He's been an informant, has been for years. When he realized I was onto him, he and his little cadre mutinied. Killed five of my own and tucked tail. I don't know where he's hiding, but his wife might. Rosanna. Lives on the Groundbreaker, last I checked. Rosanna knows my crew by name and face, but you're a stranger to her. She'll talk to you. Clyde offered me a hand when nobody else would. I'd say I owe him a good turn. There you have it, Captain. A favor for an old friend. You think so? Maybe we should have a word with Trask. Get his side of the story first. You'd be wasting your breath bandying words with that traitor. But if it makes you feel better, by all means. Remember, 
I want proof. Bring me his ring. I don't care if the hand's still attached. Here, my token. Think of this as my personal signature. Anyone who knows me by my works will know me by this token. Well enough. It's been a few years, but I still remember a thing or two. You had a chip on your shoulder. You'd argue over anything and you'd never back down. What do you mean, had? And for the record, you never could admit when you lost an argument. You see what I had to deal with? Let's hear it. A revolution is the work of a lifetime, Captain. I've spent my life preparing for the day of Halcyon's reckoning. Everything you see around you is the result of that preparation. A base of operations, loyal soldiers, freedom from the board's oversight. Hardly. The board is rotting from the inside. Tomorrow, next year, a generation from now, eventually the board will fall to pieces. Entropy is the natural state of the universe, Captain. All systems inevitably dissolve. When that day comes to Halcyon, we will be ready. That was simultaneously the least scientific and most pompous statement I've heard in ages. Well done, Mr. Harlow. A vicar? I admit, I never imagined a man of the cloth living the adventurer's life. You do keep some interesting company. Was there anything else? Not all revolutions involve bloodshed and fire, Captain. The purest act of rebellion is to live according to one's own means, independent of any masters. One day, when the board is weak and Halcyon vulnerable, we may claim a piece of this system for ourselves. Until then, we bide our time. The skies around Scylla are curiously absent of patrol ships. It's almost as if the board's sphere of influence is shrinking. Besides, our facility is well armed and located on defensible terrain. If the board tries to lay siege to us, we'll make them pay. Something on your mind? Let's hear it. I was working on this plan for years, saving every bit I could, drawing plans, biding my time. I never intended to spend my life laboring on the groundbreaker. When the opportunity presented itself, I did what I had to do. I left. You might have said something. I had some ugly business in Scylla. If I told you, I would have implicated you. Hephaestus controlled mining operations all over Scylla. Most of these operations failed. The company pulled out and abandoned their facilities. Mostly abandoned anyway. This one was running on a skeleton crew. My associates and I seized control in a matter of minutes. Clyde's got a crew of his own, huh? Good for him. Did you want to ask me something? I know, I know. Clyde comes off rougher than Mantis or Hyde. He's a good guy, though. Just gotta get to know him. Yeah, I'm still not over that. You'd think a grown man would know how to let go of his past. But I guess I'm just not there yet. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm starting to feel the same way. Got the feeling he was looking down his nose at me. At both of us. Maybe we should go have a word with Trask. Get to the bottom of all this.
So then I told him, oh, ha ha ha, that tickles. How odd. No, don't desist. I think I might like it. Further data collection is required for accurate assessment. The Groundbreaker has approved our request for docking, Captain. You're free to disembark. What a mess! What a mess! This is Halcyon News. We interrupt your regular...